St. Paul in our epistle today, um, he invites first, he invites um, the Ephesians to imitate him, to follow in his example. Then he says, because I know that among you, as I have told you before, and now I am telling you weeping, that among you there are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction. Now, what does he mean by that? <clears throat> or who are those that he considers to be enemies of the cross of Christ? Well, St. Paul says that they are those who seek only the things of this world and the satisfactions of this world. They are enemies of the cross of Christ. What can be more opposed to the cross of our Lord since the cross preaches to us not a life of delights but the mortification, the humility, the hardships of penance. So we may, you know, boast of being Christians. We may glory in printing on our forehead this glorious name. But if it does not act in our heart by the love of humiliation and suffering, we are simply being hypocrites. St. Paul says, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ, does not belong to Christ. So, so um, he who flatters himself that he belonged to Christ must live as he did, St. Paul says. So those who devote themselves to pleasure and vanity are enemies of the cross of Christ. So, because those who belong to Christ, St. Paul says, they have crucified their flesh with its vices and concupiscences. So we need to keep this in mind, because this is very important. Now the first, um, I mean, what do we consider success in this culture? Well, success, first of all, is equal to not having to suffer anything. So, that's what it is. The American dream is nothing else than having all the things you want, all the pleasure you want, at the cost or, you know, whoever my, my I mean, whatever it, it may cost. Same. Happiness is not absence of suffering. Happiness is something else. Because the first uh, work of the Holy Spirit is to conform us to Christ. So, and I mean, you know the amount of money and effort and time that we invest on avoiding suffering. In this country, health is the greatest business. If you are not sick, you need to get sick. You go to the hospital and they make you sick. sick. Now, health, a good health, is not everything in life. It's not everything in life. See? Now, so the Holy Spirit works to conform us to Christ. And Christ is crucified. Therefore, there can be no conformity to Him except by the cross. See, so, I mean, can you imagine how, diffi how difficult it would be to find a young person with the same attitude towards suffering that St. Teresa of the child Jesus had? Nowadays, it's simply impossible. So, conformity to Jesus crucified has more value and importance 
than everything else. The only thing that matters in this life is conformity with Christ, and Christ is crucified. So, the whole spiritual life, the whole Christian life, is dominated by the cross. And as the cross um, is the central point in history of this world, so it is the central point in the history of every single soul. Now, no one, no one, no single person in this world can say that he or she will never suffer. Because that's a lie. Every single person suffers, either at the beginning of his or her life, or at the end. That's not, that's not the issue. The issue is whether your suffering is in vain or not. So, so um, the more we share in the cross of our Lord, the more shall we resemble Him and cooperate in the work of redemption. That's why Jesus says, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. There is no um, correspondence between a Christian life and lack of self-denial. They don't go together. They don't go together. Same. So, this is the path which the Holy Spirit invites us to follow. So, whenever we find ourselves looking for things that are easier, or pleasurable, comfortable, whenever we notice that we are satisfying our self-love, our pride, or see that we are attached to our own will, let us remind ourselves that at that very moment we are becoming enemies of the cross of Christ. So, this idea of avoiding suffering and pain and mortification and sacrifice at all costs does not come from God, from, from the evil one. So, suffering is necessary for our purification. Now, what do we do in order for our suffering to be beneficial for us? Well, the first requisite, first condition, is that you have faith. You don't have faith, you suffer in vain. As it is the case of thousands, upon thousands of people now suffering every day. They suffer in vain. Their suffering doesn't benefit anyone. So, now, God had never placed our possibility of becoming holy as when we suffer. Holiness has nothing to do with doing extraordinary things, but with accepting joyfully, serenely, everything that happens to us every day. So, so it is not in you know, in big, big things that we have to, to do, or extraordinary things. But every day, you have opportunities to practice this conformity to Christ. See, so, um, let us keep this in mind. Let us keep this in mind. One thing, the first. There is so much... There are so many sins that need to be expiated in this world. Your own, those of your family, those of this country, someone has to pay for them. Because every sin has to be paid, or has to be punished. We have to do it. See, it is a lot easier if we do it united to Christ. Secondly, there are so many sinners that need someone to pray for them so that they may come to the faith and go to heaven and suffering accomplishes these two things so let us make sure that we 
welcome willingly um, everything that happens to us every day and offer uh, those things for these two um, purposes for the um, expiation of our sins and for sinners who don't have anyone to, to pray for them. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.